Hey, Gavox here. So, major changes to the game from what we played on the beta. Did they ruin it? Let's find out. Now, a lot of this is also going to be peppered with my experience on the new leaked beta or the new updated version, which they've made some changes to, which I did a video on. You can go watch that, but I'll pepper it in and my opinions on the things they changed, what they said, what they did, so on and so forth. So, the closed beta Feedback is what they're talking about and the changes and the things we thought that we thought. So, additional gameplay features. So, they, they changed the celebration rum mechanic from, uh, you know, it used to be like L2 uh, plus a couple of buttons. I don't know. I never celebrated it except against people who celebrated against me. I don't even remember it off the time I had what it was last year. But they said that was so hard for people to celebrate. Like, right? They're like, huh, let's make it easier for our people to be toxic to each other to style on them under the end zone. Oh, cool, man. Let's make people have more bad feelings. Whatever. It's not that big of a deal. You know, grow up. Don't get butt hurt by some celebration on the video game. I get it. But people do. Okay? So, they're like, oh, three-button combo? That's too hard. It's like, what? We gotta do Mortal Kombat codes before you put in the defensive adjustments in this game just to stop rollout fucking corners. Three buttons is too hard? Come on. Give us some fucking credit, dudes. So, LT is off the, um, you no longer have the precision modifier there because it's based off of ratings. Um, and now you celebrate with L2. So, expect to fumble a lot early in the year when you expect to, like, do a precision spin or juke or stuff like that that you did last year. You'll hit the button and then they'll hit you and you'll fumble the ball. So, sad that they uh, added that. It doesn't make no sense to me, but it is loss of precision modifier on there. On there. Clint said during the live stream, which I'll link this blog and the live stream in the uh, description below... He said that it is based off ratings. He said above 70 on the uh, 70 or higher on the attribute, you can use the steerable. So like weird because it didn't really feel too steerable during the beta. Uh, players actually felt worse and stiffer than they did in 20, at least moving. But like steerable spins, you can kind of juke and go into other things. And I don't know. I still, I, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, it wasn't as effective. The juke and stuff the spin this year was last year. Of course, we don't have anybody with 99 uh, on those abilities in the beta, we just play with regular rosters, but it, it did feel feel you know worse. So that's kind of a little bit down to ratings, and we'll we'll see when the full game comes out when we get players that can jack up to ninety nine um, to see how they feel. So, anyways, it's different and not like it's just a side grade. I feel like, and, and here's the thing about those jukes and spins is like they're trying to they're, they're really trying to get people to put out more highlight films on their stuff, and like they don't properly balance it because if you juke or spin into a hit stick that's a bad decision by the offense they don't get punished that much with fumbles like they should and it's just annoying when you can make them pay on defense but you don't get rewarded so it's it's very myopic their look at like how offense plays and how they move i think they should add a little bit more of that you know higher fumble chance if you spin or juke into a a big hit than if you just like take a hit in the open field where you didn't try and do that stuff so it's more of a brace for impact type of deal uh, because they're not just like getting off their feet and turning around to get smacked. Pre-play defensive adjustments update. So they've introduced new defensive back lock-on mechanic, which is something that I didn't know was in the game, right? I didn't didn't know this at all uh, during the beta. Didn't look for it, whatever. I would assume, uh, let's just read through the paragraphs and I'll get my thoughts on it. Which can be activated in pre-play. We need to shuffle, or, wait, that it, so it can be activated in pre-play. So they needed to shuffle around the defensive pre-play mechanics to support it. You remember I talked about why did they change uh, the defensive pre-play adjustments from left bumper to right bumper. This is why. Pressing LB L1 will now activate DB lock-on for your user control player in either pre-play or during play. And, and RB R1 is where you'll find the defensive keys menu that was previously on LB. So they changed that. Defensive back lock-on. I'm assuming, now you know what assuming does, make an ass out of you and me, that it has to do a lot with the yard that's coming out that's been leaked. So the defensive back lock-on will be something that you can that can help you lock on to maybe a, a wide receiver on the uh, opponent's side. So it might be, like, depending on how powerful this is, and now Clint said there is a little bit of a timing window on, you know, the defensive back lock-on, so it's not perfect. I think it's a user control thing. It's not, it's not it's like, you know, just you know let it do and all of a sudden the wide receiver is done. There will be a timing window where you have to react to the cut too. So it's not perfect. Cuts can still take you out of the play. Uh, but that's basically the defensive back lock-on. It's interesting that it's pre-play and post-play. Huh. I, yeah, I, I think that's, I, it might be user DB type of year, right? With how bad linebackers looking. If you can lock on and take a guy out of the play, then maybe like once you take him down, then you switch off and... 
You know, users, I did say after, once they once they did the updated rosters, Patrick Queen was faster. I did feel like usering with faster players actually was a little bit better in the updated uh, beta after, you know, the second up beta, right? The updated beta users, I felt, were better once you got a little bit more speed. So users aren't as bad. I just think a lot of the problems were, like, they nerfed users for sure, but we also were playing with really slow players. So I think it's a little bit better than uh, it, the world isn't falling in my mind, for users this next year, if you get a good fast guy. DB lockout mechanic. Allows you to use your control player into man coverage behavior on specific receivers. Wait, so here it is. Use your control player into man coverage behavior on specific receiver when holding down the LB, L1 button. While locked down, you can steer your player relative to the leverage of the lockdown receiver rather than the whole field. So this allows you to have more control over the movement of your defender. When in lock on state, you have... You, oh, here it is. I just said this. You do have to react to wires here. Cut moves within a timing window based off player coverage ratings to stay re with the receivers making direction change your route running. So basically, the AI takes care of it for you. <laughs> this is some real fucking training wheels, right? Like, that's that's my first thought about reading it again. It, it is basically training wheels, right? They're making this game dumber. <laughs> You know what's hard? Staying with wide receivers. No shit, it's hard. That's why there's no true lockdown corners in the NFL outside of maybe a couple, right? That's why Deion Sanders was so well regarded because he could actually do it, right? <laughs> Dumb. Whatever, we'll see how it plays though. Hey, like, we're, we're judging this, but I have no idea how it plays. So you know what? I'll, I'll reserve final judgment for that. Right? Let's not overreact when I haven't... Uh, even done and played this new game ball carrier archetype run styles now this is really interesting because ball carriers did run differently based off their size in previous years and it seems like they're iterating more on it which i like right ball carriers run completely different depending on who they are depending on their style like Le'Veon bell does not run like day or henry okay so i like this i really do and uh here's a quick breakdown of how this works based off ratings height and weight sorry i should go back backwards a little bit uh Feature depth via the skill system is a concept of ball carrier archetypes that directly impact run cycle and special moves each player would use. Like, so we can judge. Like, I can judge juke moves, truck moves, and stuff. But if I'm running them with the wrong back, uh, you're getting a very different outcome based on this uh, ball carrier archetype run style. So, right, like, agile and trying to juke with a bruiser versus trying to truck with an agile back, it's two completely different outcomes. So, a lot of it is based off, like, who you have to use. So, I like that they're providing this, like, you know, C.J. Anderson is an example who, you know, ran for a ton of yards last year, right? Um, who, who's a bruiser. And it's bruiser quick, bruiser heavy. So Derrick Henry would be a bruiser quick. So bruiser heavy is similar to bruiser custom animations for bigger players who don't typically carry the ball. So offense alignment and defense alignment already ran really funny. 290, oh, sorry, 290 pounds they have to be for a bruiser heavy. Um, 290 pounds for bruiser heavy. So Vita Vea, golden ticket would have been kind of cool. But yeah, bruiser quick. Would uh okay okay let's let's go to the top. Bruisers are slower rate of turning, takes longer to change direction, slower evasive special moves than agile players, but more powerful power moves applies to skill positions and linemen with less than eighty agility, and over two hundred twenty five pounds. Bruiser would be guys that are above bruiser quick above ninety speed. So what if they're, I mean. We'll see how they they end up doing this out, but basically the agile guys are all based off height and uh agility or above so basically what happens later in the year when mutt cards like uh uh derrick henry gets above an 80 agility will he still be have the animations of bruiser quick or will he have agile or no sorry will he have agile tall no you have to be under 225 pounds never mind never mind i'm gonna shut up now it's 25 225 is the threshold breakdown and 80 agility um so what if you're over 80 agility and over 225 pounds. And you're under 90 speed. What then? Huh, EA? Checkmate, atheists. All right, but basically, it is agile versus bruiser. Below are the topics of feedback received. Okay, wait, wait, wait. all right. Upvoted feedback. So, what, my thoughts. I like this. 100%. I agree with it. I love it. Keep it. We'll work with our jukes and spins on smaller guys and our trucks on bigger guys. Like, uh, like it's just truck and arm, sorry, arm bars, right? Or stiff arms, I guess is what they're actually called. So, upvoted feedback. Basically, users on defense. Clint came on, said, hey, I, you guys know how fun using us on defense? Go fuck yourself. We're not changing shit. We're making shit more realistic. And they're like, also, take a look at our sweet-ass superpower cards that we're putting out. 
<laughs> I love that. I saw that shit a lot. <laughs> yeah. Users, the speed at which defenders change direction. Yeah, so I, I'm not. I'm, I'm fine with changing directions uh, being a little slower, but it, it felt a little too much. But anyways, let's go through it. Will be largely unchanged. Largely unchanged. You guys heard what I said. The new updated beta, the user did feel a little bit better. Because vision for gameplay balance is focused more on authentic player movements and strategic decisions. Love those words. Hope they're not just marketing talk. I hope they really keep them to the core. While we are investigating to ensure there are no bugs in player movement that could be having unintended consequences, the intent of the system is to reduce the area of the field a single offensive player can cover based off ratings and direction changes and encourage coverage defenders to make more choices about what routes they can take away. As player ratings increase, the amount of ground a player can cover will also increase. Yeah, that makes sense. So anyways, that's what it is. Users, they're staying how they are. We'll adapt. We'll, we'll, we'll be fine. Change back to hurdle truck. Yeah, so basically hurdle and truck. Hurdle, I, I mentioned this, hurdle was on the... Uh, joystick and truck was on the tri triangle or y on xbox they switched them back right they, they, they went back to last year's system so there it is um the journal will still be allow you to go like this you get let, let me get out of the camera journal is you know still hurdle but you your direction right so that's how you journal one way or the other move your, move your joystick back and forth so there you go that's the journal now which also I did notice during the updated beta that the journal was on that too. I suspected as much. Many players told us ultimately they have custom controllers mapping. Hey, that's me. I said that. Yay. I'm one of those players. Um, cool. Yeah. They're not able to do it this year. Maybe in the future. Cool. That's all we can ask for. Players aren't reacting to the ball when thrown. Yes. These cases displayed bugs in a catching system, typically around missing catch animation coverage. The issue would be significantly improved for launch. We would need to support this area via tight updates. Yes! Right? It's bullshit when your defender gets thrown at and he doesn't fucking react to it. Thank goodness they're looking at that and they're going to keep looking at it. It's been an issue for a while. Um, dropped interceptions are going away. Good! Make the offense pay when they make mistakes. Hell yeah. Zone coverage doesn't feel effective. 100% agree. Uh, when the beta started, zone cover systems were completely weren't completely tuned yet, so much of this feedback was expected. Here's a detailed outline what to expect from zone coverage upon, upon launch. You know, I don't care for this. Right? I, I, I really don't care for increased reaction times over what they had. Because we play with some guys with pretty low zone. Earl Thomas still played pretty well, and he had high zone. Increased reaction times, you know, it says they scale up pretty under zone coverage, which is cool. But oftentimes when they do this, they overtune. Right? I want guys in my zone coverages... One, you know, to catch the ball and actually react to a ball when it's thrown at their face, you know, so react, but not like act like superhumans like we've had in the past. So it's, it's a very hard thing to balance, right? You won't have it all one way, all the other, because that's too much. It's hard to get that middle ground. But guess what? That's what the money's for. That's what we pay them to do. So finding that proper spot where guys will react to the ball, but not be superhumans like Madden 18, Madden 20 style of defensive zones, it's an important and it's a hard to get middle ground but it, it you know with enough trial and error you should be able to get there right we've had 30 fucking years of this so here we go man coverage rating zone coverage increased reaction times we'll see how it plays out because we don't know exactly where they went with it added logic to modify break on ball reactions based off facing direction of the fender yes if the guy's not looking at the ball he should not be able to react to it right you know i can't react to things I, i'm not i'm not it's like your mother and you're like you're like uh i don't know doing some shit in the kitchen like right on the walls like i can see you stop doing that you son of a bitch they come chase you with a wooden spoon, and then you run out of the room, and then you get your ass shit. Wait, hit? Shit? Whatever. Gotta put that, uh, gotta check that uh, swear word off on uh, YouTube now. I swear to this video. But it's casual swearing. It's okay. It's still good ads. Meaning you can clearly see the throw. You'll break faster when anyone you cannot see the throw. Good. Yes. You should not be able, you're not, they're not mothers out there. They don't have eyes in the back of their head. Improved zone break behavior for defenders with zone coverage abilities. Okay. That's fair. They are superheroes. Fixed issues in cover for quarters and palms causing zone defenders to react too much to play action. Okay, cool. I didn't really notice because play action is fucking ass. <laughs> play action's been ass in Madden for a long time. I don't even remember Madden that play action was an ass in. But I didn't really see it. Like, the people that did play action against me in the beta got sacked. Fixed logic problems with quarter flat zones and inappropriately matching vertical routes. Uh-oh. I'm telling you, they're, they're buffing match. I said this in one of my 10 bold predictions. I think match coverage might be okay next year. And I think that might be a little bit of the meta. Uh, get your match beaters ready. Fix logic problems with cover three against HP wheel routes. I think that's cover three match. 
Cover three match left them fucking butt naked. Or I guess wheel routes butt naked in a two by two. HB wheel routes in cover three. I'm trying to remember what the fucking issue on HB wheel routes in cover three. Like, you could just throw the wheel route this year, and that's like the main offense a lot of us have when we're passing because that's the only way to get a running back out of the backfield and going on fields wheel routes. So we'll see if maybe, maybe it's something that where the wheel route was getting free over the top with like if there was like a post pattern or something. That might be it. I don't know exactly the uh, logic issue there. Improved underneath zones dropping logic. Cool. Match guys. Find guys that are coming into your zone and, and, and you, know, you know, be smart and stay with them like people would IRL. Cover three and two coverages. We'll get more updates later after launch via title updates. We'll see what that means, but they're basically promising us, promising us continued support of zones. Player switching logic doesn't feel intuitive. Basically, what Clint said is going back to Madden 20 player switching. So, they try to change it, and it kind of got a little wonky, and I definitely agree. It's not... I think they should keep on keeping on with that, that player fix uh, switch logic, because Madden 20 is not perfect, uh, but at least we know when Madden 20 is going to screw us or not right now. But I definitely think they can keep working on it. So don't like throw the baby out with the bathwater. You may have had some good stuff, but yeah, there were some bad parts of it too. Um, uh, I'll, I'll just say they're going back to Madden 20 for that. So no change from last year to this year. Film study ability, they took it out, but they might bring it back later, is what they're saying. So I, like, here's the thing about film study: if if you competitive is in salary cap, they can just make film study like all other overpowered abilities, like you know, ten thousand cap, then it'll never be used. But for Mutt, I don't know. There was a lot of positive feelings about film study. Myself, I thought maybe if they were going to keep it, they should make it more plays to get the film study ability activated instead of just three. So film study was a very, you know, like they said, controversial um, type of polarizing uh, ability. Whereas one, it would change the meta of the game, right? It, it would fundamentally change how players have to run offense, right? You can't just stick in one formation with one overpowered route and keep spamming it and then make other changes to your other routes, right? That's why people choose formations and routes because the formation's either good at blocking a certain blitz or it's got a very powerful route that you can spam, like rollout corners, but that was in so many different sets this year that there wasn't really a meta set that needed it. So they're saying hey you can't do it with film study you can't spam that one thing because we'll know what that post pattern is and if you spam that one play we'll be able to see it so basically it's encouraging people to change it up i understand people were like uh very angry at it it's very understandable that they're angry with it because basically you know if you have your one money play that can bail you out in a certain situation you want to keep spamming that and that's just kind of how people think it is what it is. So, fatigue penalties for scrambling quarterbacks are too severe. The feedback on scrambling quarterbacks told us that countering scrambling quarterbacks felt diff difficult on defense, but also that fatigue penalties to out-of-position ball carriers felt too punitive at times. Here's the improvements we've made to balance this out. Decrease, decrease in fatigue penalty for simply running out with an out-of-position ball carrier but not getting hit. Increase the fatigue penalty when taking hits with an out-of-position ball carrier more significantly when taking hit stick tackles. Okay, that's fine. I mean, that's fine. I noticed in the updated beta, quarterbacks actually fumbled, so that's cool. The beta, you really couldn't fumble with a quarterback, even taking hit sticks, unless, you, I guess, you were severely uh, fatigued. But, yeah, definitely afterwards you will be able to fumble, which is a nice change. Uh, but I, you know, I don't mind the change. I, I guess I don't have an opinion one way or the other on this one. Cool. Scrambling quarterbacks, you know, it's super hard. Unless you're in Mutt and you can, like, spy Julius Peppers to keep up with the Lamar and Vicks of the world. They're fucking powerful, and they always have been. Scrambling quarterbacks are the hardest thing to balance in gaming. Because, like, scrambling quarterbacks IRL, like, you know, think the Michael Vick of the world. The reason that Michael Vick wasn't, like, too overpowered in real life because he was a fucking idiot, and he couldn't make good decisions and didn't fucking work, right? He didn't practice hard. He didn't film study. He wasn't like Peyton Manning back there, you know, spending 50 million hours a week trying to dissect defenses, watching tape from them 10 years ago. Mike Vick just showed up and dominated. So that's why he wasn't as good IRL. Uh, but in Madden... When you do have people like that, you do have the Peyton manning as nerds, they become pretty powerful. We have slightly boosted the win probabilities of AI controlled pass rushes on simulation all pro, competitive all pro, and competitive all Madden, which will make higher rated pass rushes have more impact when AI controlled. For context around this tuning, stats in the beta showed an average less than one defensive sack per game while we were targeting closer to two per game. To balance this tuning, we've added logic for pass block, double teams to fully utilize the blocker resistance system. That means that when, pass, when rushing against double teams, any memory built up against the rush at that point in the game will count towards the rush for both blockers and the double team, making it harder to beat double teams. Double teams should not be beat. Uh, I don't think you should, right? Rushing three people, you should not be able to get to the quarterback anytime soon. I think that's too easy to play coverage defense. Rushing four and having like four guys, you know, three guys one-on-one -on -one and one guy double team that's basically wiped out of the play, 
Cool, right? One of those three should be able to beat their guys with enough time. But rushing three, getting two double teams and only one guy? I don't know. I don't like double teams getting beat in this game. Because double teams IRL, unless you're Aaron Donald going against them, some like okay offensive linemen, they're so hard to beat. And especially the offensive linemen we'd normally run in Mutt. Watch, watching Joe Thomas and, I don't know, Joe Thute, 99 overall, Tooney getting fucking beat to shreds, double teaming guys, it's kind of embarrassing. Uh, no, double team should not be split or beat almost at all. Um, defenders should lie on the ground more often than they beat double teams. QBs should be stripped in the pocket without starting a, without starting a throw on competitive. Did I, did I say that right? I think I did. I understood it right. I don't, I'm trying to remember my words. We received feedback that told us QB fumbling before starting to throw is unfair for the competitive game style. In response, we have disabled strip sacks on a quarterback inside the pocket with the exception of pass rushes with strip special ability. This change applies to competitive only across all difficulties. I don't mind this, right? Compe pocket passes are already your ass. <laughs> They're already fucking ass. And they've been ass versus mobile quarterbacks for a long time. Even though it's not realistic, in the end... It, this is one of the, the, the few unrealistic changes that I'm like, yes, do it. Yes, buff quarterbacks in the pocket. Make people dot me up. Please, I'm totally okay with this unrealism. Past max throw power passing feedback and penalty. When the throw power max is hit by quarterback per his throw powering rating. I don't know if I read that right. We have made a change so that quarterback cannot be hit with both an accuracy penalty and a power penalty on the same, th and same throw except cross body throws. As this was causing throws to be wildly off target and was confusing the players. We have also updated the passing feedback text to be clear for this specific passing penalty. So instead of reading, reading pass max throw power, we'll now say out of range. This applies when trying to throw to receiver who is further downfield than the quarterback's throw rating. Basically, if you threw a guy, like you know how Madden 20, you can basically roll out of the pocket and chuck the ball for a one play beater on the run uh, with your fast quarterback throw on the run, like the Vic uh, Lamar style or any kind of escape artist quarterback. And you could, you could chuck it, you know, 65 yards on a dot this basically made you not do that and in the beta you threw the ball like 40 yards and it really looked ugly and people were frustrated because they weren't able to throw their uh cover three beaters now and in the updated beta i noticed this too you could throw those cover three beaters and it's not that hard even when it's pass max you don't get that penalty you actually get it close to them it's not bad at all um it basically it's a lot more like 20 than 21's beta this basically kind of goes back. So there's a little bit of the pass max throw power. We'll see how it is. But in the beta, in my l short time, because I shut it down basically the next morning, um, once it got past that, it, it was not bad at all. I, I, I don't think we're going to mind this that much next year, unless something, unless I miss something, which could happen. I only spent an hour on it, a little over an hour. The following bugs have been fixed post-launch. Rainbow color, arms, pink equipment. If you weren't in the beta, you don't know what that means. Basically, you know, obviously it was going to get fixed. These guys... Um, it, it was a beta who gives a shit incorrect player pictures who gives a shit this is so it's so weird this is one of the reasons why like i hate like you know ea said don't post images of the beta and like you see this is like the most upvoted post on the r madden subreddit and they're like ha 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 they got the wrong lamar jackson picture for lamar jackson it's like it's a fucking like those are the things you expect to be wrong during a beta right i know that's the dumbest shit ever right like it's like oh ha, ha, an e easy qa bug that's gonna fix player pictures <laughs> if that launched with the game definitely make fun of them but in a beta god damn come on we gotta pick our battles here and, and i you know i pick a lot of bad battles too so you can call me out and things that i don't that that maybe you think are insignificant and that's fine also and i just think this was so insignificant but it was like so highly upvoted and pff, just annoying advisors not positioned on helmets correctly okay Gamer takes cover the play clock when playing online. Definitely noticed that. I think I gave feedback about that on my video. And I'm glad to see that that's fixed. Coached adjustment reset after every drive. This is the biggest one, right? This is the one to care about most. And I'm glad that it's got fixed. I really hope, like, if you have a hard flat coverage, that the hard flat isn't taken into the zone coverage adjustment, right? Hard flat should be set to, like, zero. Then you can set your coach coverage depth adjustment to 30. And that's, like, cloud flats, uh, you know, um, purples light blues the soft squats those can go back to 30 but i don't think the hard flats should be in there so we'll see if they launch with hard flats and the coach death adjustment too but anyways that's what it is what's next gridiron notes we got friday july 31st focus on x factor and superstar abilities you guys saw my video we've already got those abilities leaked we'll see uh you know what else they can surprise us with but uh that's kind of already leaked maybe i'll do some stuff on that if there's anything new in there um otherwise they did say during the stream that player that they're that our mutt live stream will happen 
a little bit past mid-August, which is crazy because like August 20th, we have EA Access in the game. We'll have the game in hand. We'll have MUD in hand on the 20th. And they're like, we're going to reveal the MUD information after, you know, mid-August. Like, what are the MUD people doing? <laughs> like, right? Wait, what? I get, they, I really hope they're busting ass, right? They, they, for their live stream to be so long, and they took basically the entire second half of this year off. I don't know what the mutt people have been doing, but I hope it's fucking fire, right? If 21 doesn't come out of the box, just like literally, I take it out and it looks just like my last rap album, Super Hot Fire, then I'm going to be pissed, right? If that content isn't just in fuego, if that content isn't, you know, what's, uh, I can't even say it anymore. Like, uh, like a Pandora's box, we open it and like shit just starts shooting out. The only thing we la la latch down is, is maybe a Michael Vick card. Don't let that out for a while. We don't, you know, we don't, we don't need that for a little bit, but I, it, it better fly, right? It better be like fucking monkeys in an old 1939 film with uh, a witch and Dorothy and a scarecrow. I think it was called the witch of the witchers yes see ya tomorrow guys